the brave ones are here. So you know you're an important guy when you score the last, the last uh, session on the last day um, just before the end of the conference. That's, you know, it's going to be a good day. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm painfully aware that I'm the guy in between you and beer. Um, so uh, we'll, try to, we'll try to keep it sort of upbeat and sort of go from there, um, you know, standard disclaimer. Um, so my name is George Stravon. I'm a principal solutions advisor um, inside of Dell. Um, we're going to talk today a little bit about, um, it's actually kind of an exciting session for me. Um, because this is really the first time that we've talked about this solution that we're going to be bringing to market um, later this year. Uh, it, so it's, it's kind of an interesting time to, time to talk, so it'll, it'll be, and this is the first time I've actually ever presented any of this stuff publicly, so it'll be, uh, it'll be an interesting conversation. But I wanted to start by telling you a little bit about me and, and sort of a personality quirk that I have. Um, I hate to be photographed. I don't know why. It's just something that I, I hate it. I don't care for it. So usually, when I go through and I'm going to set up uh, any sort of you know, public persona, I use my my South Park avatar. Uh, and so you know that's me. I did this several years ago, back when I had hair. Uh, but this is my uh, this is my South Park avatar. And and, and I remember. So I, I as I was preparing for this talk, I got my my uh, uh, feedback from the marketing people, and they said we need your bio. I said great. They said and your headshot. I said okay. Don't care for that normally, but I, you know, I don't, and I'm looking through it. I'm going through my pictures. I got to find a picture so that I can put it up on the website. And I'm, I'm looking around, and there's just nothing. So I've, I've got a solution. I say to myself, here's what I'll do. I got my webcam. I got a nice neutral background. I'll set up a nice picture of myself, um, and I'll be able to send that in. So this is the result of that process. Um, it's not quite what I really wanted, and it, the color is actually even worse uh, on this particular side of things, but we go from there. So I was sort of lamenting this problem. I'm going through this thing and, and talking about how upset I am, and I went to my friend Joe, and I said, Joe, I really hate this picture. And he said, don't worry about it. I have a problem for you. I'll Photoshop it for you. And so he helped me out, <laughs> and I said, I'm not so sure that's really the direction we wanted to go with that particular picture, but but, but he did Photoshop it for me, so that's the uh, that's the that's the result. So it's good. We get going. So three takeaways from my session. If you remember nothing else, and if if nothing else that I say sinks in, um, there's three things I want you to remember. Um, the first is that when we look at the cloud, you know, we've spent a lot today talking about cloud and provisioning and authentication and 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 provisioning and blah blah blah. blah. Cloud governance really requires more than just provisioning. That's not sufficient. It's necessary, but not sufficient, kind of going forward. Um, second thing I want you to kind of understand is that current identity and access governance solutions are challenged, uh, would be the polite term, um, in the cloud. And then third, you know, Dell is working to fix this. So three real simple things, and, and we'll talk about kind of what some of the details are. Okay. Why IAG in the cloud? Like, kind of, what are some of the challenges that we have here? Um, so, I want to tell you a customer story. Um, so, uh, I, I have the the benefit or the ability to the you know the kind of the the, the great uh, the great blessing of being able to talk to lots of customers um, or kind of a, as we go through life. And and this was one particular customer that that kind of came to us and had a, a particular problem. So, they're a global 500 customer. They're you know they're a name that you'd know. They're a big big customer. Um, they uh, were in the process. We went through a bake-off with them. They loved our identity and access governance platform. We won the business. Um, they're really happy with their IAG solution. They're really, really sitting there. And they said, you know, one of the things we should talk about before, we, as we, we, we sort of embrace this project, is our cloud needs. And we said, great. OK, what's your, what's your challenge with the cloud and how we're we doing? So, well, you know, we've got some applications that we're going to need to be able to provision to the cloud. We said, we can do that. Not a problem. You know, our system is, is extensible and flexible, and we'll be able to do that. Um, and we said, well, you know, how many applications are we really talking about here? And they said, well, probably hundreds today, but it's probably growing from there. And so we said, we blanched a little bit, and we said, okay, I'm, I'm sure we can do, you know, we can do hundreds of applications. Meanwhile, thinking in the back of the house that how are we going to be able to, you know, kind of go through this? It's going to take a while. And they said, just so you know, you know, we're onboarding these things every day. You know, we'll have a business unit that has maybe, you know, 20 users that needs to get access to this application, but we need to be able to to support these and manage these. Um, and when you think about the fact this is, this is a, uh, a company that has you know, tens of thousands of employees globally across the world, has, has 
has hundreds if not thousands of SLAs across multiple organizations. Um, and again, it's changing every day. This becomes a really big challenge of, of how we're going to be able to address uh, how we're going to be able to address this. You know, so it's kind of the normal way an identity guy would come in and they'd say, "Is they say, great, no problem. We'll come in. We'll build a connector to that solution for you. And then once the connector is built, you'll be ready to go." The challenge with that is that regular approach is just never going to work. Um, you know, I had a I had dealt with a, a separate customer, different from this one. Um, but they were talking about the cloud, and they said, well, I've got some developers on staff, you know, and we have, we have a few hundred applications that we want to be able to, we want to, be able to build, and uh, my developer's really good. It takes him five days to build a connector for each one of those connected systems. And so I'm doing the math, you know, five days divided by five, carry the one, and I'm like, wow, you're going to be deployed in a couple years, and by that time, probably the portfolio is going to have completely changed. So the point of the story is that the regular approach and the way we kind of do this is, is just not going to work in a cloud-based environment. And I'll just, I'll just throw an aside here. You know, historically, this wasn't really a problem because as both kind of Todd and, and Joe sort of indicated, customers have had very low expectations of their identity and access governance solution. You know, IAM has been such a pain in the neck and so difficult to do um, that they've just sort of said, if we can get the Active Directory accounts taken care of, then that's a good day for us, and we'll, we'll manage the rest of it some other way. But the bar is really changing. Um, you know, the solutions have gotten better, the industry has gotten more mature, and so customers have higher and higher expectations. Um, you know, we, I, the same customer I work with, they said, I said, well, what's your target um, for, for your onboarding? And basically they said, we want to be able to, you know, have a person from starting the company to be fully deployed in, you know, let's be conservative, let's call it five minutes. And I said, okay, uh, we, but, but that gives you the idea, the target of what we're kind of trying to get to. So what about federation, right? We were, Joe was just talking about federation and how important it is and, and how it goes. Federation's great. You know, we love federation. Um, and it, it handles a big blocker kind of in terms of the auth, the, in terms of the, the, the auth and auth Z problem um, of how do I deal with the fact that my user doesn't exist anymore. But there's some challenges in federation. Um, you know, one, uh, the only thing that the application knows about me in a federated environment is the stuff that I put in the claims that I'm sending across. Whether it's, you know, regardless of kind of what the mechanism is, they all kind of use that sort of claim-based methodology. Um, there's probably lots of information I want about the user that I don't necessarily want to stuff into a claim all the time. Um, and so what we're finding is for the majority of these user applications, even if, um, even if they're, they're off even if the authn process is going to be coming through a, uh, a federation type environment, there's still going to be some kind of downstream user store that we're going to be storing some kind of information about that user. Sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of information, sometimes it's a lot of information. I want to, may want to be able to store some of the stuff that Joe mentioned, you know, what's my, what's my job title, where am I in the hierarchy. Um, I may want to be able to know the relationships between different classes of users. So. Not always necessarily, but certainly what we're seeing is for the majority of these, these things, we're still going to have a user store. Um, and the minute you say you have a user store, uh, my mind as, a, as essentially an identity management guy I, comes to the, the notion of management, and then from management we move on to, uh, we move on to governance. So lots of these, or lots of these, these cloud-based providers have adopted um, the just-in-time provisioning methodology. So it's really simple. You know, I come in, I hit an authn request. Um, I've never seen this user before. I say, aha, I need to create them on the fly. I unpack the, uh, I unpack the claim, I create a user, and now I'm good to go. There's, there's no management required, everything's taken care of. Right, everything's great, nothing I have to worry about. No, we still have some challenges kind of in this type of environment. So there's a couple of people who really, really like the just-in-time model. This guy loves the just-in-time model. Um, because uh, there's lots of information that's, that's being leaked and not necessarily being managed. Um, if there's one thing I've found in the couple of years that I've been doing this is that um, everybody is really, really concerned about the, uh, about the, the getting the user provisioned. And you know, looking backwards, that's always been our, our big time is how do we make sure people are productive on day one? Um, but it's only very recently in the wake of, of, of the, the kind of the mega breaches that we've seen lately that people are concerned about how do we uh, get people out of the system? How do we make sure we shut off their access? And I, 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 and I don't know if anybody else has seen the same thing, but I would say probably within the last year, the pendulum has actually shifted. That users and, and companies and customers are more concerned about being able to turn off access than they are about being able to turn on access. 
um, big kind of a bit of a shift in the way that the uh, the way that the, the the industry has looked at that. Um, this guy also loves it when you uh, provision a user that you don't deprovision. We don't have anybody who looks like this working for us at Dell, um, but I'm sure some of the other software vendors that you work with are are really happy when you come in and you say you need how many more licenses, and and they're thinking about their time on their on their yacht when they go back. But yeah, this is your Salesforce rep or your your box rep or whoever else as you as you think about there. So those guys are are really really happy when you provision a user and then and then don't deprovision. Um, or don't manage, or open it up to the universe and let everybody kind of log in in order to do things. There are some standards-based solutions that we can look at. You know, SPML is out there. It's, it's not terribly in wide use, but it was a pass at this. Um, Skim was a way we look at this. You know, both of these things are, are, are good. Um, what we found when we look at things like Skim is there's some schema challenges in the way we, the way we address things. Skim, um, is probably the, the, the hot, you know, so I, 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 I kind of would pull the audience. Um, you know, for a long time I had sort of a long, a lot of people talking about Skim as a way to address this. Um, it's only been in the last year or so that I think we've really seen there's been traction around it. Um, again, I, I, I often say that Skim addresses, the, uh, Skim addresses the how, but not the what. You know, it says if you're going to send data back and forth, this is, the, this is how you will send the data but it doesn't necessarily define what data needs to go back and forth. Um, there's some challenges around uh, isolating kind of what, what information we share. Um, I'll talk about that more in a, in a, in a little bit, but um, you don't necessarily want all of your cloud providers to have access to all of your data. You want to be a little more granular kind of in the way you, the way you do that. Um, and and, and I, I point the note here that you know, provisioning is not equal to governance. Um, again, you know, provisioning is about is about that 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 initial. How do I give the person access? Governance is about how do we manage the life cycle of that access? Um, how do we keep track of of where that access lives, kind of in the context of the broader uh, enterprise persona? Um, how do we make sure that 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 this access or this entitlement um, is not in conflict with some other entitlement? And there's a half a dozen other things that we need to we need to kind of think about in there. So the thing about uh, most of the identity management systems that are out there, um, especially when it, with respect when it deal, comes to dealing with the cloud, is they all sort of suck. Um, none of them are really very good. Uh, everything that, 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 that's kind of in market right now um, was really built for an on-prem kind of environment. And you can retrofit it, you can, you know, but it's, it's, it's kind of like you know, taking your boat and putting it on a trailer and strapping it down and calling it a car. It, it doesn't really address kind of the need that you, you need to do there. Um, we've already talked a little bit about, about access versus governance. Um, we talked about privacy. Uh, pri I didn't really talk about privacy. You know, again, um, we want to be really clear about what information we share out with our, with our partners. And we really want to be able to do that in a, in a granular way. Um, again, the, the, the challenge that we're, we're finding as we go through these things is when we talk about the cloud, we're not talking about a handful of connected systems. We're potentially talking about hundreds or thousands of connected systems. and so. When we start to look at policies for the kinds of information that we're going to share with our business partners, we want to make those um, decisions globally and want to make sure that those decisions are enforced globally. Um, and so there's, there's a challenge in, in how you do that, and we'll talk about that in a, in a moment. Um, and you know, and again, the, the, the target for, for my customer was, was five minutes, not five weeks. And, uh, and so that's the kind of the mindset that we have going forward. If we're going to build this, we're going to take our existing sort of on-prem system and we're going we're to work with the, these cloud-based environments, um, that should be really be our standard. And it turns out that's actually a fairly challenging problem kind of going forward for some of the areas that we're, we've talked about. So what do we need um, if we're going to be doing this? The first is a cloud-based service offering. Um, any, you know, when we're talking about cloud-based applications or managing cloud-based applications, it kind of makes sense that we would want to be able to have a cloud-based service offering. Um, because again, if we're moving to the cloud, the whole idea is we're trying to get less infrastructure on-prem. Um, we want to be able to, to manage it in the cloud, have it in the cloud, kind of move from, move from that perspective. Um, kind of the really goal is, is if we've take this, we've take this, the, this notion that we have where we've got a large number of applications and a large number of, of offerings coming in, we want to be able to blend them seamlessly into the identity and access governance infrastructure that we have. 
um, taking into account all of the stuff that we've already talked about, where we want to be able to isolate the information, we want to be able to manage it in the cloud, we want to be able to, uh, to deal with it kind of just in time. But at the same time, we don't want to give away all of the richness that we have in an on-prem environment as it exists today. You know, we've spent the last you know, 10 years um, moving from kind of a, an, an IT automation uh, based approach all the way up to what Todd was talking about from a you know more of a much more business centric much richer kind of ecosystem we don't want to give any of that away um, we want to be able to uh, do provisioning and deprovisioning and pro provisioning and deprovisioning in a really rich way uh, one of the other challenges with just in time um, again is because I have because I have to bring all that context over with the claim, it makes it difficult for me to correlate pieces of information. Again, I can get you a username, first name, last name, username, password, but if I want to convey the information about where you exist within the hierarchy, um, you know, an example might be, um, you know, we use Salesforce.com kind of within our organization, um, as lots of people do. Um, I may want to convey where I exist kind of within a territory. Um, so if I'm a if I'm a national representative, you know, I want to be able to view everybody kind of within the organization. But if Joe is a regional representative, he may only want to be able to see things that are, that are within a region. So it's, it's, it's something more kind of than, than, than we can convey necessarily. If it's for me, tell him I'm not here. Um, if, uh, so we want to be able to convey, we want to be able to, to, to provision, deprovision in a much richer way kind of compared to what we can, what we can do is just part of a basic, uh, part of a basic organization. Um, so we want to be able to do these things like construct, uh, container structures, users, groups, nesting, kind of all the rich sort of stuff that we want to, we want to be able to do that. Um, we want to be, to the extent that it's possible, we want to be able to use a standardized, uh, standardized target schema. And then finally, just kind of from a, from a personal goal, you know, we, we really want, we, we, we see ourselves as, as, as a goal and, and what we want to be able to do is what we want to be building is best of breed. We want to be building kind of the best solution that's out there. How many people are familiar with Dell One Identity Manager at all? I know you guys are, but so I, I don't want to spend a ton of time, and I'm sort of planning for this talk that nobody really knew anything about it. So I wanted to do a real quick high-level um, overview of uh, Dell One Identity Manager as a, as a product. Um, it's not dependent upon our cloud connectivity, uh, but it's something that we are, we, it inherits a lot of the benefit of, of uh, Identity Manager kind of going forward. So put really simply and in a 30 second you know, blurb, Dell One Identity Manager is a next generation identity um, and access governance solution. It's built um, on a single code base with a single set of developers um, and it contains all of the modern bells, whistles, features, functionalities, et cetera, that you would expect in a identity and access governance platform, including provisioning, deprovisioning, including roles, including uh, role entitlement lifecycle, including uh, simulation and workflow and modeling, um, access ba or attribute based access control, um, separation of duties, identity self-service, access certification, kind of all the stuff that you would expect in a modern identity um, system. And it does this using a, a modern object-oriented based architecture. Um, so it gives us a very, very powerful, very rich platform um, for, for things going forward. The challenge that we have to kind of, we, we, we wanted to do is we wanted to say, well, how do we take this kind of rich platform that we've already built um, and, uh, and deal with it in the cloud. So, and again, for kind of a really sort of a, at a, at a, at a bottom layer here, because we're an object-oriented uh, platform, um, we adopted an object-oriented kind of methodology of how we handle this. So, in, you know, in, in the object-oriented world, everything looks like an object. Um, and if you know how, kind of how class inheritance works, you need to have a base class. So we, we kind of built this notion of a base class um, within our identity and access governance system. And then anything that we have, whether it's Active Directory, or LDAP, or email, or SAP, or Lotus Notes, or blah, 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 all inherits from that single, uh, that single object. And what that gives us is the ability to treat all of these accounts kind of as the same thing. Um, so when we look to do things like reporting, or separation of duties, or um, for that matter, provision, deprovision, the system sees them all kind of as the same thing, um, and we're able to abstract out changes among the system. So kind of the first approach, when we, when we looked and said, okay, how are we gonna build this thing? We said, no problem. 
we'll just go ahead and we'll just plug in another another thing in this environment, um, and we'll call it you know a web identity, and, and we'll kind of we'll sort of go from there, and, and we'll move along move along those lines. Um, hashtag fail, <laughs> and I'll explain why hashtag fail uh, in a moment, but we'll we'll go from there. If you think about how an identity person um, approaches this problem of, of we've got these identities that we have to manage kind of all over the place, there's really sort of two big buckets that they flow into. The first is kind of this bucket of broadly used, um, widely uh, deployed, frequently changing um, uh, credentials. These are typically sort of very important entitlements or very important credentials. Um, and they really require kind of strong governance. So uh, for the on-prem side of the house, these are typically your, fr your frontline um, applications that you're familiar with. Things like uh, the obvious one is Active Directory um, that kind of comes in. That's the kind of credential. Almost everybody in the organization has it, even in some way. Um, you know, we, we, we want to be able to manage it, and it's pretty tightly coupled to, to, our, to our users, and we go from there. And so it makes a ton of sense that we're going to put time into making sure that that's well managed and well governed. Um, on the other hand, you also even have some of those uh, that exist off-prem. Um, things like Azure AD, Office 365, Google Apps. Salesforce, right, for organizations. Things that are, again, they're, they're broadly used. There's a large number of, of users who use this, and uh, it changes fairly frequently. And so it makes sense that we're going to spend time building connectors and that we're going to manage this. Then there's this second bucket. These are the kinds of things where we have low user population um, or, or, or low change volume. So historically, for on-prem, we've always dealt this pretty specifically. Again, they're pretty, they're, they, they may be business specific. They may be homegrown systems. They're things that are kind of maybe necessarily not that easy to, to automate. And so we had kind of a strategy for, for this, especially if it, was a small, um, if it was a small user base. Usually we'd say, no problem, we'll raise a help desk ticket. Somebody will go in and manage it. Maybe if we wanted to get a little more specific, we'd have some kind of CSV or some kind of structured export, structured import that we'd manage there. How do we do it off-prem? Yeah, we just sort of scratched our heads and looked very sad and sort of went through there. Um, so that's kind of how, historically, from a connector perspective, we've looked at the universe. Um, that's the same. There we go. There we go. Did I miss a swing here? Yeah. No, I didn't. OK, good. Yeah. So. How are we going to handle this kind of in this new offering that we're bringing to the table? Um, the first is, um, regardless of, of, of whether you're on-prem or on-prem or off-prem, so that's the first kind of key understanding or key learning is we first, we, we said, as we're building this thing, um, from, a, from an identity management perspective on, the, on the, the identity manager side of the house, I don't really want to know or care whether it's on-prem or off-prem. I still need to be able to manage and govern those identities um, in a very, very rich way. So we shouldn't necessarily separate out whether it's an on-prem or it's an off-prem kind of environment. So there's kind of really three big ways that we, that we handle things um, for, for, the, for that second bucket. There's, there's three options that we're going to handle it. The first is what we're going to call generic connectors. Um, generic connectors are, are things, we've already got these. These are kind of, you know, we, we do sort of maybe 60% of the work for you. Um, and then for the last mile, you're going to have to build some business process. Um, so you know, we're going to consume a flat file. We're going to consume a database. We're going to do PowerShell connectivity. You know, we, we build most of the connector, and you're going to have some, some work that you're going to have to do. Um, this is, we're still going to have these kinds of information, probably for one-offs, and it's probably for, not, for, for typically internally facing applications that are not necessarily well known. Second option is something we call the uh, we call a connected system module, right? So there's gonna, this is going to be um, this is going to be the connector, the physical uh, the physical sort of here's how we put the bits on the wire and here's how we manage it, but we've also got some information, some understanding about how that system works. Um, so you know there's an out of the box data model. We've probably got some basic understanding of what the IGA process is going to look like. So again, this is our traditional things that we look at as on prem. This is going to be things like Active Directory, SharePoint, SAP, where we, we know more about that application or we know more about how to manage those systems than just kind of a generic uh, system. 
Um, we're continuing to extend these for things like mainframe, things like for AS400. But there's also going to be off-prem applications as well on here. So again, Azure AD, um, Google Apps, they're going to be well known. We're going to manage them. And then there's this third new option. And this is the thing that, this is the thing that we're building that's going to basically be, be our new offering. And that's this hybrid approach. Um, so, you know, we've got a numerous and, and growing number of cloud-based target systems. These are going to be things like Salesforce and ServiceNow and Concur and SuccessFactors and, and uh, what's the one that I just looked at today? And Yammer and um, all kind of the stuff that's sort of, sort of going forward. So how does this going to look kind of within Dell One Identity Manager? So in the, in the beginning, we've got kind of our generic D1IM sort of database, which is going to be our centralized data model. Um, we have a whole set of generic connectors that are shipping for, for dealing with generic things, and we'll allow you to continue to build kind of connectivity to custom things using your generic connectors. We also have this rich ecosystem of connected system modules, and this is how we're going to connect to, and this is going to, again, this is going to be both um, on-prem for things like Unix and Exchange and blah, 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 but also off-prem for kind of the well-known well or, or, or frequently deployed um, connectors. We're also going to be adding this third uh, option that's kind of a new, uh, a, a new thing. Um, here it's labeled as Cloud Connector Library. This is not the final, uh, this is not the marketing trade name. So there's, there's going to be a marketing kind of thing around it. It's not what we're going to call it. But think of it as this Cloud Connector Library. So you notice there's some storage here, right? So it's, it's using the, the handy dandy uh, cylinder icon. That's how we know it's. There's some data that gets stored there. Um, so this is going to be a subset of the data that exists within Dell One Identity Manager. I made a statement earlier that we want to be able to establish kind of at a, at, a, at, a, at a very high level or at a very rich level the information that we're going to be sharing with our web partners. Um, the stuff or the information that's going to exist about our users that exists in the Cloud Connector library is a subset of the information that exists in Dell One Identity Manager. And we're going to be able to replicate kind of this data back and forth. Um, this is kind of a really key thing because it allows us to isolate, the same way we can use an identity management system to isolate the person and their life cycle changes from the accounts and their life cycle changes, the Cloud Connector library is going to allow us to isolate the, the, the on-prem life cycle from the cloud life cycle. Um, turns out there's actually a lot of uh, applications where this becomes important. Um, one area that we're seeing this quite a bit is in higher ed, where there's, a, in, a, there, where there's all kinds of regulations and rules about the information that can be shared kind of with third parties. And so what this allows us to do is put this one single choke point in place that allows us to control what's, what information is getting out um, from the main systems out to the Cloud Connector library. And then we can further restrict it kind of at the individual application level, but it gives us this choke point that we can, that we can have for kind of a point of management. The other piece that's interesting about this is I don't necessarily care where this piece lives, and I'll show you what that looks like kind of in a moment. So what we're building. This is going to be a cloud offering, right? So this Cloud Connector library thing that I mentioned earlier, this is going to be a cloud offering. Um, it's software as a service. It's going to provide a cloud-based environment for connecting to cloud applications and, and provide uh, fast-growing support there. We are going to expose a fixed schema for exposing, and essentially what we've decided to do is to adopt the SKIM schema um, with some extensions. Um, so SKIM is, is insufficiently expressive for some of the use cases that we think we're going to need there, and so there are some extensions that we're going to have to, that we're going to, have to put in there. Um, but the whole idea behind the scenes is that, it, is that we're going to be able to extend that as an endpoint that we'll be able to leverage. And I'll show you why that's interesting kind of in a second. Um, but the important point is everything from this Cloud Connector library managed to the cloud and everything else, um, that's all kind of an, an operations offering. That's all going to be part of, the, part of the, the cloud offering. So all of the operations, managing the synchronization, managing back and forth, managing the configuration. And finally, and the key thing is the implement, implementation of connectors um, is going to be part of the offering. So for customers who are D1IM customers, uh, they'll be able to kind of point to this cloud connector library and have that be a complete uh, cloud-based provisioning, deprovisioning, cloud management offering um, in order, to, in order to, to manage that. Again, black box kind of from that perspective. No code to write, nothing to manage, nothing to implement. 
So kind of what does this look like? So the Dell One Identity Manager integration on our side of the house, or on the, on the D1IM side of the house, we're going to be providing some enhancements into Dell One Identity Manager in order to support this environment. It's going to ship with Service Pack 2 for version 7.0, which is in Q3 kind of of this year. So uh, looking toward the, not too far. I had hoped to have a, uh, to, I was going to, wanted to be able to demo this to you guys for this conference. Um, but that, <laughs> my, my, my colleagues laughed at me when I told them when the, uh, when the date was going to be, and so that didn't work out too well. Um, but, uh, but we have this kind of in, in beta at, at a couple different customers. Um, so, so the point of the story is that's, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be coming and, and coming down the pipe. Um, this is going to be our solution for everything that's in the cloud that does not have a D1IM connector module. So again, the D1IM connector module is for large, well-known um, connector, well-known kind of cloud-based applications that exist sort of within the cloud. Um, we're also going to be shipping some new connectors inside of Dell One Identity Manager. So basically a connector that knows how to talk to the cloud connector library in order to do provisioning, deprovisioning. So from an identity management, from a, from a D1IM perspective, this kind of lives almost uh, separate from, um, from the environment. And I, I won't go too deep into the architecture on the D1IM side, just because you know, some of this stuff probably isn't going to mean too much to you guys from a, from a CSM perspective. But we're, we're basically building in a cloud services management module and a universal cloud interface module so that we'll be able to talk to this piece and, and whatnot going forward. Um, won't go into too much detail here, because if you don't know the UNS, then a unified namespace doesn't make a ton of sense here. The key takeaway is, is that um, we're supporting more than just username password. And so we're going to be able to model kind of rich um, interactions from an entitlement perspective, from an item perspective, from a group perspective. And the reason why this becomes important is because this is all stuff that we need to bring in in order to be able to support things like separation of duty, um, things like multiple inheritance. Um, kind of all the richness that we expect inside of, of Identity Manager, um, but have it available kind of in a, in a pretty rich way. Um, two modules, the CSM module. The CSM module is going to be the on-prem component of this thing. So this is going to be the thing inside of Identity Manager that knows how to talk to the Cloud Connector library. Um, it's going to be the integration point between D1IM and the cloud applications. And again, from a D1IM perspective, it's going to be plug and play. You're going to be able to sort of turn it on. It'll know automatically sort of how to talk to the, how to talk to the Cloud Connector library. Um, and it will just handle that synchronization um, kind of sort of semi-automagically. Um, on the, uh, on the, the UCI side, the universal common interface, I thought it was universal cloud interface, but I guess my things are messed up there. Didn't proof me to my slides all that well. Got to work on that. Um, that's going to be kind of the cloud side of things. The interesting part about this is, this is going to be um, available, first of all, it's going to host the skim connector, but what's interesting about this is we'll be able to uh, deploy this either on-prem or in the cloud, and it'll be uh, it will be able to be a managed offering kind of from either, either side of things. Um, so I wanted to go back, so, so this is kind of an interesting perspective, and I'll show you when we look at um, why that's actually interesting when we look at deployment possibilities sort of in a moment. Um, so the cloud connector, a common skim schema definition, um, plus some out-of-the-box extensions for a couple of specific um, attributes. There are some attributes that are not covered by the default schema. Um, there's going to be some object classes that are not covered by the, by the, uh, by the default schema. So we're going to be able to, to, to be very, very rich in the way we handle these things. The important component in here is that because of the way we're designing this thing, it's going to be reusable by other products within the Dell security portfolio. Um, so not here, but there, so, so a question that we get a lot is, is for things like, how do you handle privileged access management um, in a cloud-based environment? Um, this gives us the capability in order to do this, because if, if the Cloud Connector library knows how to do provisioning, deprovisioning, it's not out of the realm of possibility that it wouldn't it wouldn't, it wouldn't be difficult, to put it that way, to just simply extend that schema and then have a different security product like TPAM, like the analytics engine, like uh, those components to be able to call into this environment um, either both as a, as a consumer of information or as a supplier of information or actions. 
Okay, so I have, uh, I have a few more minutes. We'll go through a couple of different scenarios um, uh, just to show you kind of what it looks like and then I'll open it up for questions. Um, and then we'll hopefully get you out to your beer and parade in a timely fashion. Um, so, you know, this is kind of our traditional identity manager implementation. Um, D1IM, uh, we have multiple editions, don't worry about it. You know, we'll lay in the UCI and the CSM um, in process with our, with our identity manager. And then from there, we'll log in, we'll drop in our, uh, our Dell One identity manager and the cloud library connector, which will go up and talk to the cloud connector library, deal with the, with the off-prem systems. Pretty basic. Second option, similar kind of thing, same sort of implementation, but now we keep things in a separate environment. We have two separate systems, the CSM talking to the UCI, the UCI talking, to, talking up to the Cloud Connector library um, into the off-prem system. Again, this is, the, this is kind of the secret sauce about dealing with a, kind of how we're dealing with the, with the Cloud Connector library. And I don't necessarily care where it sits. So it can sit on-prem, might sit in the cloud, so we have a couple of different options depending upon how we, how we want to deploy it. Now here's where things get really interesting. You say to me, George, I don't care about Dell One Identity Manager. We've already deployed, insert one of my, one of my fellow vendors in this space you know, somewhere. Uh, you know, I'm using active roles on, on, uh, from, from Dell, but I'm, I'm using somebody else for Identity Manager. No problem. We have the ability to open up the UCI to allow active roles or any third-party IDM or IGA system in order to be able to call into it. Now, in Identity Manager, we're going to do that work for you, right? You're going to have to know how to talk to the UCI, but it's such a skim. I mean, it's, it's just a, just kind of sort of be a basic sort of out-of-the-box connector. Um, so we're going to ship with, we're going to ship with the ability to do that. And then again, I can deal with any of the connectors, any of the connectors that we develop as part of the Cloud Connect infrastructure, um, talking to the Cloud Connect library, and there you go. Um, finally, you know, we have the ability to do kind of more of a federated sort of model where we've got multiple environments. So talking in there. So that's kind of the, the, the couple of deployment models. So the cool thing here is that whether you're using Dell One Identity Manager, and we think that's going to be a great win for us um, because folk, for folks who've adopted Dell One Identity Manager as their platform are going to be able to kind of very quickly adopt that platform. But we also have an idea that we'll be able to open this up and extend it to third-party IDM systems. And again, the scheme is going to be published. We're going to be able to pull it out there. So the three takeaways, IDM is about more than just access. Provisioning is not enough. We need to be able to govern. We need to be able to manage. We need to be able to provide all the stuff that you would in an identity management platform. Cloud presents some unique challenges to the IDM space. Again, it's big. Um, there's a lot of change. There, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to do. Um, it's not enough to simply retrofit kind of existing on-prem systems and just kind of write them to the cloud. We haven't seen a lot of success there. The good news is, is that Dell is building a cloud-ready platform um, that's unique in the industry in the sense that it can be on-prem, it can be off-prem. Um, it's going to support multiple identity uh, governance platforms and be a, uh, a cloud-ready platform going forward. And with that, I will, uh, I will pause and allow you to ask questions in the chat. No. Any other questions? No, yeah. Um, actually, I said that facetiously, but I believe it's already been posted as part of the, uh, if not, I can, I can send it to you. Yeah, just shoot me, a, shoot me an email and we'll, we'll go from there. You don't work for SailPoint, do you? Just, just kidding. <laughs> Joke. Yes, sir. Uh, how do you do uh, reconciliation? How do we do reconciliation with the cloud? So there's ultimately going to end up being two processes. So let me go back a bit. So I sort of blew through it because I didn't, folks aren't familiar with Dell One Identity Manager, so it's, it's sort of a, uh, it's sort of a bit of a challenge. But what I'll do is if I can get to the slide that I want to get to, going back and just a little more. So we'll start with this view. So this guy and this guy are pretty much the same code base. The only difference is kind of a little bit of the schema, and, and it's got a slightly toned down process. This guy knows how to deal with um, how to handle reconciliation. So, and I think if I go back one more, and I'll get to the slide that I want to. Yeah, that's the one I wanted. 
So this is my um, this is my uh, over this is my, my my super super duper simplified view of the Dell One Identity Manager infrastructure. But the quick answer is in this component here, this is a big old database. Um, this database knows um, about each of the uh, identities that exist in each of the system, and it knows how it got them. It knows when it last reconciled them, and it knows uh, it knows where the information came from. So it knows not just kind of the data, but all the metadata associated with it. So when I go and I run a reconciliation with the target system, it's going to vary a little bit depending upon the target system. Um, if the target system has, has a, uh, a, a uniqueness identifier or USN or something along those lines that I can use, where I can say, I know all of the changes since point of time X. I'm just going to go through and I'm going to grovel the, I'm going to grovel the changes. I'm going to detect what's different. And then I'm going to apply the rules that I have configured within my system. So how do I handle, how do I handle collisions, basically, is the easiest way to do it. Do I merge them in? Do I say, I'm the source of truth and you're wrong, and I'm going to either mark it and alert an administrator, or am I going to pave you over, and am I going to consume your changes? And that typically changes depending upon, depending upon which piece we're talking about. That logic is split across the cloud side and the on-prem side. So the cloud is, rec I, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing at a virtual thing that you can't see, so I probably shouldn't bother doing that. The cloud is reconciling things with the cloud and coming up with its subset and coming up with its, its version of the truth. My on-prem then reconciles with the cloud component and again, applies those rules. How do I handle it? Do I consume it? Do I push it out? And we define that. We can define it down to the attribute level if we need to. But generally, we probably want to be a little less uh, specific or a little less pedantic on how we handle that. And part of it's going to depend upon what the cloud system reconciles. If we, if we, can, if we can just pull changes, we will. If we have to grovel the infrastructure, we will. Um, but we don't normally like to do that if we can avoid it. We can look at timestamps. There's lots of ways we can handle that. A quick question, uh, no, fast forward six, nine months ahead. Do you have a pricing model in mind? I mean, is it by user, by transaction? What we, I, uh, I'm a techno geek, and I sort of deliberately don't talk about pricing. But I can tell you at a high level, the, 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 the way they're envisioning it is going to be a, it's going to be a subscription-based model which is kind of typically what they, what they see in those, um, in those kinds of environments. And it's going to be kind of based on, based on the number of applications that you're, that you're looking at. So they'll probably be you know, less than five, less than 10, less than 100. I don't believe they're looking to, to price it by individual, by, by number of users. Um, because at the end of the day, it probably doesn't really matter that much. It's, it's typically by the number of connections is the way it's going to the way they're going to they're, they're look at it. Um, if you have strong feelings about how it needs to be priced, um, I, I'm sure we would welcome that feedback. I'm looking at you, Todd. Yeah, as far as I know, it is. Yeah. Priceless, yes. Well played. Question. OK, three questions. So number one. Uh, yep. How do you compare this with OIG, especially the complexity of deployment? With OIT? OIG, Oracle Identity Oh, Oracle, Oracle. I, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> Oracle. Um, so I compete with Oracle a lot. Um, we generally, uh, you're talking specifically about the cloud stuff, or are you talking about the, the platform, platform in general? The platform in general? Um, we generally compare very favorably um, with Oracle. Um, it's a, uh, we are, again, all things being equal, uh, we are a much simpler solution to deploy because we come with everything out of the box and configured and ready to go. We don't, you know, the, the, folks, who, the folks who I've seen, you know, Oracle's a great solution. Um, it's a very complicated solution. So, you know, whereas I see, the first question I, I look at when I look at a solution like that is I say, can we compete with those vendors? You know, the, the big framework vendors. Can we compete with them and be, be competitive? And, the, and, and from a, both from a use case perspective, from a breadth of offering perspective, and then from a raw performance and, and availability perspective. And the answer that I have found is yes, absolutely. We are actively deploying in some of the largest um, 
the largest organizations in the world, including big financial services organizations, including governments, including um, you know big kind of thorny organizations. Second thing is, you know, kind of how do we compare from a from a from a kind of deployment perspective? We're typically an easier an easier uplift um, because again, a lot of this stuff is pre-configured out of the box. There's no, you know, there's, there's one code base. There's one set of developers. It's one object model. It's one throat to choke. It's one install. It's you know, whereas the big framework vendors typically tend to have uh, come up over time. And as a result, they have a lot of kind of even internal integration that they have to do before you look at external facing integration. A proof of concept, and they say, "Here's the five or ten things that we want you to show you can do," and you're, c you know, we gave the same five or ten things to the other vendors. Yeah. Generally, the feedback we get, and we did a big analysis of, you know, all the deals we won, the deals we lost, and what the factors were. Um, in the deals we won, generally it was, okay, you guys took three days to complete the ten things. Um, you know, vendor X. Um, Three days in, had two things completed, and asked for another three weeks. And you know, vendor Y was able to get it done in two and a half weeks. You know, so generally, we when we're successful, we find that it's because it's so much quicker to accomplish what you need to accomplish. Yeah. So for sure, and, and that's in the proof of concept. I I don't have no, I have no idea on the actual deployment, but I think it translates over. Yeah, and I, and I think I think the analysts would agree with. Would, uh, would agree with us on that side. You know, uh, the only thing I'll throw out there is, is I think Todd makes a good point. You know, the, 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 the sales guys cringe when I say these things, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. All of these platforms work. We all work. <laughs> they all can, can do what you need to do. The question is at what velocity can they do them and how quickly can you realize business value? And that's our, our, our mantra on these things. You know, that's, that's, the, that's, that's department of yes, right, is we want to make sure we're recognizing business value as quickly as humanly possible. So I'm happy to stick around and answer questions, but I know I was told do not go over time on pain of death. So um, if you if you want to head out, I appreciate your time. It was good talking to everybody, and uh, I'm happy to continue to answer questions after this fact. So thanks a lot. Thanks.